buffer calculations. Let's continue our work with buffers to do some calculations involving buffer solutions. Let's start with the buffer solution and calculate the pH of the buffer. Here's the problem. What is the pH of a buffer that is 0.12 molar in lactic acid, HC3H5O3, and 0.10 molar in sodium lactate, NaC3H5O3? Ka for lactic acid is 1.4 times 10 to the minus fourth. When we have a buffer solution, we have some of the weak acid and its conjugate base, or the weak base and its conjugate acid. In this case, we start with lactic acid and the lactate ion from the sodium lactate, which is a strong electrolyte and fully dissociated in water. By the way, we can completely ignore the sodium ions present in the solution for this calculation, since alkali metal ions have no effect on the pH. This is an equilibrium problem, so let's set up the icebox. We begin with the equilibrium reaction, which in this case is HC3H5O3 plus H2O in equilibrium with H3O plus and C3H5O3 minus. The ice box looks like this. The water column can be included and ignored, since the concentration of the water will not change, or not included in the ice box, since it is not in the equilibrium expression. The initial concentration of the weak acid is given as 0.12 molar. The initial concentration of the H3O plus is zero, since we did not start with any of it. The lactate ion, C3H5O3 minus, comes from the sodium lactate, which is a strong electrolyte and therefore completely dissociates into Na plus and C3H5O3 minus. So the concentration of C3H5O3 minus initially is the same as the concentration of the sodium lactate, which is given as 0.10 molar. There must be some H3O present, so its change will be plus x as will the lactate ion, since both are products. The lactic acid will decrease by x. This gives us the equilibrium concentrations of 0.12 minus x for the lactic acid, x for the hydronium ion, and 0.10 plus x for the lactate ion. Substituting into the equilibrium expression, we get Ka equals x times 0.10 plus x divided by 0.12 minus x. We can assume that x can be ignored in both terms since they are so close and that simplifies the expression substantially. The expression becomes 1.4 times 10 to the minus fourth equals x times 0.10 divided by 0.12. Solving for x, we get that x equals 1.68 times 10 to the minus fourth. The ice box says that x is the concentration of H plus, so the pH of the buffer is 3.77. Note, a quick check shows that the percent dissociation is 0.14%, so the approximation of ignoring x is excellent. Now that we know how to determine the pH of a buffer solution, the next question is, what happens when we add some strong acid or strong base? As a starting point, it is safe to assume that, as long as we do not add too much, all of the added strong acid or strong base is consumed in the reaction. This leads to a two-part process for calculating the pH after the addition of the strong acid or strong base. The first part is a stoichiometry part, where we figure out the new initial concentrations of the acid and conjugate base, and the second is a new equilibrium calculation. In the stoichiometry part, the acid, or base, reacts completely with the conjugate base, or conjugate acid, converting the base into the acid, or the acid into the base. This changes the amounts and concentrations of both the acid and the conjugate base. If we add a strong acid, say x moles, 
then the amount of the conjugate base will decrease by x moles, and the amount of the acid will increase by x moles. If we add a strong base, on the other hand, again x moles, then the amount of the acid will decrease by x moles, and the amount of the conjugate base will increase by x moles. Once we know the new amounts of the acid and conjugate base, we can calculate the new concentrations of the acid and conjugate base. These new concentrations of the acid and conjugate base are the initial concentrations for the new equilibrium calculation. Let's do this sample problem. A buffer is made by adding 0 0.300 moles of HC2H3O2, acetic acid, and 0 0.300 moles NaC2H3O2, sodium acetate to enough water to make 1.00 liters of solution. The pH of the buffer is 4.74. Calculate the pH of this solution after 0 0.020 moles of NaOH is added. You will note that we are given the number of moles of the acid and can get the moles of the conjugate base through the moles of the salt. If we are just finding the pH of a buffer, we can work with only the concentrations of the weak acid and its conjugate base. But when we are looking at adding some strong acid or strong base to an already existing buffer, we need to be using the moles, not the concentration, for the stoichiometry part. If we are given the concentrations, then we need to convert them into moles. We have added a strong base, NaOH so it will react with the weak acid. When the base is added, it reacts in a one-to-one -one ratio with the acid. This means two things. We lose as many moles of the acid as we added moles of NaOH, because in reacting, the OH- minus removes the proton from the weak acid. Two, we gain as many moles of the conjugate base as we added moles of NaOH because each time we remove a proton from an acid, the particle becomes its conjugate base. Since we started with 0 0.300 moles of the acetic acid and added 0 0.020 moles of the NaOH, the moles of HC2H3O2 after adding the NaOH will be 0 0.300 minus 0 0.020 equals 0 0.280 moles of acetic acid. We also started with 0 0.300 moles of the acetate ion, the conjugate base. So the moles of C2H3O2 minus, after adding the NaOH, will be 0 0.300 plus 0 0.020, equals 0 0.320 moles of C2H3O2 minus. The final step in the stoichiometry part is to calculate the concentrations of the weak acid and its conjugate base. The concentration of HC2H3O2 will be 0 0.280 molar, and the concentration of C2H3O2 minus will be 0 0.320 molar, because the volume of the solution is 1.00 liters. The concentrations of the weak acid and its conjugate base are the initial concentrations for the equilibrium part of the calculation. So now we can fill in the ice box. The change in the products is positive since we need to have some H+, and we add the initial and change rows to get the equilibrium row. Substituting the equilibrium row into the equilibrium expression, we get Ka equals x times 0 0.320 plus x divided by 0 0.280 minus x. Again, we use our approximation that x is small compared to 0 0.280 and 0 0.320 to simplify the expression to Ka equals x times 0 0.320 over 0 0.280. We look up the value of Ka in the table and find that Ka equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. So we can rearrange the equation and solve for x. We get x equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus fifth.
Since this is the concentration of H+, we can calculate the pH, which is 4.80. The original pH was given as 4.74, so the addition of the NaOH has only changed the pH by 0.06 units, quite a small change. Another way to solve these types of buffer problems is by using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. It is particularly useful when doing several problems with the same reaction. Let us consider a generic acid, HA. Here are the equilibrium reaction and the equilibrium expression. If we rearrange the equilibrium expression a bit, we get Ka equals the concentration of H3O plus times the ratio of the concentration of A minus over the concentration of HA that is, the concentration of the conjugate base over the concentration of the acid. If we take the negative log of both sides, we get minus log of Ka equals minus log of the concentration of H3O plus plus minus the log of the ratio of the concentration of A minus over the concentration of HA. Minus log of Ka is pKa. Minus the log of the concentration of H3O plus is the pH. A minus is the conjugate base, and HA is the acid. So, in general form, for a weak acid, pKa equals pH minus the log of the ratio of the concentration of base over the concentration of the acid. This rearranges to pH equals pKa plus log of the ratio of the concentration of base over the concentration of the acid. This is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. This means that if we add base, increasing the concentration of the conjugate base, the ratio will increase. Log will be a more positive value, and the pH will go up, which means the solution is more basic, as we would expect. If we add acid, increasing the concentration of the weak acid, the ratio will decrease. The log will be a more negative value, and the pH will go down, which means the solution is more acidic. A very useful point that is clear from the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is that if the concentrations of acid and conjugate base are the same, the ratio is 1 and the log of 1 is 0. That means the pH is equal to the pKa. So let's do the same problem as before but this time use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. As before, the addition of 0 0.20 moles of base will decrease the number of moles of the acid to 0 0.280 moles, and will increase the number of moles of the conjugate base to 0 0.320 moles. Because we have a buffer, we assume the changes in these concentrations are small enough to ignore, so these initial concentrations become the equilibrium concentrations. Plugging the numbers into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, we get pH equals the pKa, 4.74, plus log of 0 0.320 over 0 0.280. So the pH equals 4.74 plus 0 0.06, or 4.80, the same value we got before. There is one other useful point to be made, and a caution in connection with the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. The useful point is that, since the equation contains the log of the ratio of the concentrations of conjugate base and the weak acid, and since the substances are in the same volume of solution, we can use the number of moles of each substance rather than converting to the concentration. The concentrations will be the moles divided by the same volume, so the volumes will cancel out. The caution is this. Technically, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation can be used whenever we have a weak acid equilibrium, whether it is a buffer or not. However, unless we have significant amounts of both acid and conjugate base, which is a buffer, we will not be able to make the assumption of ignoring X for both the acid and conjugate base. And that means that the unknown X will also appear in the ratio as well as in the pH. This is true whether we start with only 
one of the two particles or use up one completely by adding enough strong acid or strong base. So the Henderson-Hasselbosch equation should be used only for buffers. This brings us to the final two points in connection with buffers. The pH range of a buffer is the range of pH values over which a buffer system works effectively. This is usually a range of 1 to 2 pH units on either side of pKa. This corresponds to an acid conjugate base ratio from about 100 to 1 to about 1 to 100. At ratios larger or smaller than that, the solution does not have enough acid or enough base to act like a buffer. If you want to make a buffer of a particular pH, it is best to choose a weak acid whose pKa is close to the pH you want. The buffer capacity is the amount of strong acid or strong base that can be added to the buffer before it loses its ability to buffer. As you might expect, this is directly related to the number of moles of acid and conjugate base present in the solution. The more acid and conjugate brace are present, the greater the buffer capacity.